Do we need to do a mic check again? Should be good to go. We're good to go. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our kind of second roundtable for second the evening. Round our day one finale. This is the day one. I think, you know, unless anybody's got some hot topics we got to hit after this, uh, I think we're going to continue with the short schedule today <laughs> <laughs> so we can be ready for tomorrow. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit. First of all, let's just do a quick introduction. We got Ergen Angie way down at the end. We've got Larry from Air Guns of Arizona. We've got Travis from Gateway Air Guns. We've got Joe right here, who's here all week, dude. Thank you oh, for coming boy. out. Tip your waitresses. I'll be here all week. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, funny man, Joe, uh, will be <laughs> here all week, and he's from Predator Pellets, and my name is Rick Utsler with Air Gun Web, and we are doing this awesome Air Gun Expo, and uh, now it's time to roast Joe. All right. Uh, no, seriously, we were talking a few minutes ago about Joe's experience and what we have at the table here. And frankly, you guys out there, and, and we, we want you to contribute. If there's something you have a question on or an opinion that's different than what we're saying, tell us, you know, truth is that we have five different folks up here with five different likes and dislikes and so not, I mean, they're going to cross over and be different and, and that's okay. Uh, the fact that, we're different. Who cares? Um, if you've got a different opinion, then share it. Then we will discuss it. Exactly. Um, and it's all right if we stay where we have a different opinion. That's frankly okay with me. I don't have any insecurity that way. Um, but you have a lot of experience sitting at this table. So if you have questions about air guns, man, you got a lot of people here that you can maybe get some answers. But Joe is like the, as I said last you know, before is that small bore, long range yeah. hunting maestro genius oh, prodigy. I'm not bad, but <laughs> anyway, I'm just, you know, uh, it's this is the anti roast of Joe. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, why did you decide? I mean, most people don't go that direction, right? Most people, no. when they're going to shoot longer, they go bigger, more heavier yeah. caliber. They go just a completely different rec- or direction. Why did you go? small bore long Long range range, why did you do that you know it's funny when i got my first pcp it's 177 then i converted to 22 then i got power hungry wanted a bigger caliber so i went up to bigger calibers but when i got to that point it was like you know yeah bigger caliber works but it wasn't challenging i guess not challenging enough so i just decided to take some 177s i had and mod them out and make them powerhouses so and then um we have people like nick nielsen and um um of nsa and dale of varmint knockers making 177 slugs and um i went with varmint knockers because he has uh he made a longer profile 177 slug that worked for me in 19 and a half grain and 22 and a half grain and both my modded rifles and one's a modded out 177 with a jsr valve that travis supplied to me and then I have a 2250 I built off a bunch of parts I had and got some stuff from a few guys and I powered that up. And both of those rifles will push well over a thousand feet per second with yeah. those slugs, but I have them back down to about 960. Mm-hmm. And I, I can hit prairie dogs all day from 100, 200 yards. Yeah. And they, 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 a lot of people want, you know, wonder for 177 slug would travel that, that accurate at that range. And they, do a phenomenal job and still have knockdown power yeah because i've hit prairie dogs and had complete passers at 180 200 yards well it's sort of like if you think about it right so if you look at a really nice varmint pesting round yeah 17 hmr exactly it's a laser and it's the same principle if you get enough velocity with that small round right. then you create the laser yeah if you have a 22 and a 177 and they're very close to each other which frankly most air guns are yeah I mean, we're only talking a couple hundred feet per second difference right. but when you could double it or you you start to really get some serious velocity because you're talking about 20 grain at mm-hmm. you know nine something yeah that is that's a lot it is that is pushing that it is. is where that all of a sudden now that thinner profile gives you that better ballistic coefficient yes. with the velocity that you can get out there and really smack and, something that makes sense to me. and they're moving and then you know cedric um too fast for you beat me with the 172 and built his 172 marauder so um we had been talking and um i told him i was gonna do a condor 
and um, got a condor done in one seven two, and then Cedric got his condor done done in one seven two, and I'm telling you, the both our rifles are eighty foot pound capable. Wow! But oh you know, God, it, that's crazy. It's yeah. I mean, they can push. I can push a thirty two grain NOE um, cast slug at eleven eighty. Wow with that rifle mm -hmm. and then Cedric cast a 26 grain that he had hollow point at 24 and a half grain. And that thing is pushing. Oh my gosh. Right now with my settings on my condor, just power roll two, it's pushing a thousand fifty. And I get a really consistent string from shot one to shot 25. Right. And and you know, with the better BCs, once again, we keep stating this. Right. It allows you to shoot further and, and retain energy out further. But it also, the other thing is, it allows you to shoot faster with a slug than you can exactly. uh, a pellet because pellets are drag stabilized and slugs are, you know, spin stabilized. Question. Well, two things. Firstly, Peter thinks Angie is the best shooter. <laughs> Secondly, Daniel would like to know what slug would you recommend on the hunting field for the origin up to coon size small game? Would um yeah. I shot that the, the the knockout 22 knockouts. Okay. Shoot really good out of the origin. In fact, they shot better than the pellets really? 50 That's yards close. like that. Was so, that the 217s or the 216? Well, right. look at them tomorrow. Right at 217. I think the 217. Yeah. I think that's all I have, actually. I don't think I have the Yeah, because I didn't see. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so that's the 217s, good. they shot really good out of the origin. They, wow. They were really good. So that's a, that's an easy call. It's amazing. Some of these slugs coming out now from JSB, they're shooting in everything. You yeah. know, people don't have, don't have to get a specialized barrel to shoot these slugs now. They can use a stock barrel. And, and shooting them through a choke, even. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I'm doing on my, my high power 177s. I'm using a. A marauder barrel and a and a crossman twenty four inch barrel. Yeah, and I and I kind of followed yours and uh, two fast's coattails there, and I built my uh, one seven two uh, Raptor Mini mm -hmm. just to uh, go bedling ground squirrel hunting. Because um, once once you start shooting them in close, they get further and further and further yeah. out. And pretty soon, you're making one hundred fifty <laughs> yard shots, and with the pellet gun, with shooting pellets, it's that's just a what 50 50 at best right did you use a tj for yours tj okay. no 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 lw i'm sorry lw, LW. Yeah. i have a friend who did lw and it was it he built i tried a short, the tj the tj nice. did not work well but the lw um worked fantastic the green mountains what i'm using on my condor mm -hmm. and it's amazing uh, my friend rick at rmpa built a condor ss with a and he used a lothar vault and he cut it to 18 inches mm -hmm. oh my god it, yeah that's, that's what mine is extremely i took a prairie dog with that at 284 mm -hmm. yeah wow. it's just amazing what i you think can he's do. the best shooter <laughs> yeah on furry <laughs> stuff on paper i, I, I fold like a i was a guard <laughs> green mountain makes a great barrel yeah, yeah they, sure do. Do. they do yeah what do you think larry do you hunt a lot not a lot no do you nope. like hunting yeah, I enjoy hunting. Yep. I just don't have much time for it. Do you right. like uh, small working. game or, or big game? What kind of hunt do you like to do? I do both. The last I did uh, was small game, but big game as well. Yeah. yeah. Not, so e the last big game I killed was with the bush buck, mm -hmm. 45 bush buck, 60 yards, one shot. It went 40 yards and keeled over. That was it. Nice. DRT. So, we got a question. Yes. Two questions. What grain? I think that was with regard to the slug for hunting coon size small game. So what grain? And then does the pro shop have the knockout slugs in stock? The knockouts are 25, 39 grain. That's plenty of knockdown power for a 22 slug. Oh, yeah. We don't have any, any slugs. We don't have any slugs in stock <laughs> yet. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get some eventually. Who do we ask about that? <laughs> hey, his number is 843-555-1234. My number is 303-761-1236. That's Predator. You can call me. <laughs> I mean, right now, um, we had some knockouts come in on this last container. They're all gone. Um, God help you. <laughs> Just right. We we I know a lot of people are complaining about the pellet shortage, and I probably say this every day to them. Um, blue 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 in the face and it's just right now we're just at the mercy of the of the shipping companies and because our orders are being built it's just 
they're sitting on the docks and we're waiting. And, yeah. uh, and unfortunately, Frustrating for everyone. Yeah, I'm killing everyone. I'm killing AOA. I'm killing Aragon Pro Shop. I'm not you, but <laughs> I'm killing everyone right now. So I apologize. And, and then there's the problem too, you know, that uh, when stuff does become available, there's quite a bit of hoarding going yeah, there's on. There's a ton of hoarding. So these guys are buying up, you know, bricks and bricks of pellets uh, because they're afraid they can't get them, which isn't helping the situation. I'll tell you how we solve that. You limit. We limit. It's yeah. really simple. You yeah. get, you we do buy, some of that as well. Yeah. You buy two tins a month. Yeah. That's it's just the only get. way yeah. you're, right. you can get a little bit to all your customers. I'd rather have everybody be able to shoot a little bit than one guy to be able to shoot everything. Exactly. Right. And it's not about, look, I'm not going to retire on my pellet sales. No, no. I mean, look, there's a little margin in pellets. Right. It's awesome that way. But, you know, it's about, <laughs> I've got a bunch of guns sitting in the container. And if I don't have something to put in them, then why would you buy them? Well, you so, know, it doesn't help when I sit on a couple of cases for myself and I just don't share with no one, you know. Oh, well, <laughs> I knew it. I knew. Oh. I knew it. We heard it here. He confessed. String them up. They're all Stratton, so no one's going to shoot them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So when did you start really getting serious about modding your guns and seeing how far you can stretch things? My first disco, because that rifle was the main PCP to get at the time. It was expensive. And then companies like BM were out. Um, God, who's that one guy? And um, there's another guy in Idaho. He had a, a high pressure HPA sports. Yeah, him. And then um, Baker, not Baker, um, BNA mm -hmm. had um, valves at the time. And then, of course, Don Cothran was building valves, but a lot of people were didn't know about them. But that's when I, I started. That's how I, I learned about working my own rifle, too, because there was no one around to work on it. Two yeah. questions. Yep. Go ahead. One's from me. All right. Um, wh whose first air gun was a Daisy Red Rider? Wow. Okay. So, what was your first air gun? Mine was. And do you still have it? Mine was an 1894 lookalike Daisy, plastic stock and all. <laughs> My first one when I, because I, I shot my dad's when I was a kid, which was a blue streak. Um, my first one, though, that I bought was a Crossman fan. I bought two of them. There were two brake barrels, and I still have my original one. The other one became a parts gun. <laughs> what about you, Travis? I, you know, I don't know the um, number designation of the gun, but it was a Daisy pump-up one and, and, it, and it had a, B, a BBs you put on the side. 30, power line 35 or something? I think, yeah. yeah. How about you, Angie? You gonna skip Larry? Well, no, Larry I already. I volunteered. Oh. Um, Way to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> she can hit the target, but can't hit a handoff. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, my son had a Bronco that he actually got from Rick, right? but um, my first one that I also got from Rick was a Hot Son um, Alpha. Oh, right. Muddy girl. The Muddy Girl. Yeah, it's a great cute little gun. gun. Do you still have it? No. You know, air yeah. gunner. I gave it. <laughs> I gave it to another little girl okay. who is loving it. Okay. There you go. Now, how do you feel, Joe? Uh, I'm not giving. I'm not giving no kid my gun. He can buy his own. <laughs> he can buy his own gun. Her own gun. I got a fusion. I can give him that's in there. You know, really nice, decked out, laser. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Red dot. This is my gun. Two bipods. You, All right, my first. <laughs> other than one that I bought, like with my own money, uh, was probably a Crossman, like 760 Pump Master or something like that. Now, my dad had Sheridan's, had a 177-22. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a blue streak. Okay. Uh, but he had the 177-22. And I love shooting those. And they always seem to do better with 16 to 20 pumps. <laughs> 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 not really, not really. Don't do that. <laughs> you like that? Why is the seal always going yeah, now? It, it worked yesterday. Um, <laughs> or, or, <laughs> I always remember, thought they needed more. Pumps do you remember too. with a multi pump? My dad had one of these two that was. Uh, he's not here anymore. Um, but he had. It was at a Woodstock. It actually had a metal receiver. It was a pump up. It might have been a Daisy. 
a pump up, but it actually was made of metal. So this was older. Yeah. And those actually actually also work much better if you put 13 or 20 BBs in the barrel, get a shotgun powder going, <laughs> tend to work. But you then, then had to get 20 pumps in it to really get them out. Uh, and guys, don't do any of that. But that as a kid is what but I did. you're giving them ideas. My first gun that I actually bought after all of that, and I found air guns, or they found me, however, was a Remington Genesis. Oh, wow. That I returned within a matter of days <laughs> uh, because it had a bad barrel joint. And I learned very quickly that brake barrels have this deficiency if they're not made well. Uh, and then the next one I got that I wound up giving to my um, my brother-in-law um, who passed away a couple years ago. Mm. So it's probably back in the family Vermont. closet. Yeah, in Vermont. Uh, was a... Uh, Gamo Hunter 440 oh, back wow. when they were wood and metal and that gun was just really a nice gun uh, so I started in this world uh, this modern air gunning for me it was all a hundred dollar to two hundred dollar brake barrels yeah a lot of Zissico stuff a lot of uh, the B26 um, those guns um, that remember, remember that AK looking thing that yeah that, that had one of those and so, yeah, I had a lot of just uh, entry-level springers is where I started. Then my first PCP was a disco mm. and a Marauder in it. You know, right. You know, Rick, yes. you have she asked you about your first gun. I know. Now we're hearing about <laughs> 52. Well, look, the <laughs> other day you asked, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hot song you asked somebody, I, really I think it was Travis, <laughs> about his first compressor, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just ramble. I, I I'm gonna put the ramble Boy, card out. I get to the fight. I get to play the ramble card tonight, right? Okay. I wax about my dad. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, it was a it's a long day, folks. Just bear with us. So, what was the other question? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, G Man has a question for Joe. Is there are there any twenty cal coming on the shipment? Any what? Any 20 cal? 20 cal? Oh, 20 cal. I believe they are coming on the next shipment, but it's going to be a while. We had some 20s go out um, last Friday. Obviously not to him, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I know, We're talking I know of G-Man, yeah. and um, so G-Man's all right. I know, but no, he don't need no 20s. He's all right. Air Guns <laughs> of Arizona has them in stock. Good. Nice. The heavies are the... Um, or the 13 grainers? The 13 grainers. Nice. Yep. You're going to bail someone out there, Larry. Yeah. Well, I shoot happen. 20 caliber, so I that's why I, I keep know. track. I, I love that bore. I love Larry. that bore. Another question. Is, is the 22, <laughs> I might get thrown out of my own house here for this one. Is the 20 caliber, excuse me, is it just for old people? Oh, see, I got a 20 caliber spree. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but you told us today you're old, so you know. Yeah, but I have a 20 caliber Air Force barrel on this game. Like the youngest guy. <laughs> uh, the I, is it is it really a useful caliber? Yes. Given that targets. you have so much going on in 177, 22, 25. Um, does it make sense for people to keep trying to to make that a viable pellet? The only thing that gets close to the 20 caliber is the new 13 grain JSB. When I hold for wind uh, in field target, you know, I shoot 177, yep. I shoot 20. Okay. I hold half as much with my 20 as I have to for my 177. Okay. That's right. A 177 so, flat 22 thwack. Yep. That's all you need. And the other thing is it retains power because it's 14.3 grain pellet. That's what we used to shoot in 22s. Yeah. I just, I, I, I question that. 20 caliber in the broader sense of the market. Let's go down, please. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we have different opinions, right? Well, well I, I think you're right, Rick, though. I'm with you, Joe. In, in the broader yeah. market, it doesn't have a whole lot of appeal. Um, but in the field target range, it's got a lot of appeal. There's, yeah. Like Larry you know, said, it's uh, you, you're, you're holding half the distance. As a, if you're shooting competitively, where it made sense that I, I can that's, see that. That's what. That's what there's enough. Saying. There's a ton of boutique calibers in the firearm world. Every sure. time you turn around, somebody's got some mm-hmm. other thing they've nicked down and thrown into a thirty out six cartridge. Yeah, that's what right. they do with it. But I, it, I didn't know if it was sort of impractical these to, these days to keep trying to push that caliber forward. 
It's bad. Just curious. Yes, Sue. What's the best pump action air rifle in 177 or 22? Pump action as in hmm. 1377, 1322. Next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they're highly modable too. Blimpus would like to know. <laughs> Sorry, I love that name. Why are pellets not designed like the lead of a 223 with the ballistic point shape? instead of the Diablo skirt look. Well, that would be a slug. Yeah. I mean, we, we, there's 20, there's slugs out there. Right. And, the and, other issue would be fitting into a magazine. Right. They'd be too long. So you have to really dry them too. It's, it's a big right. And also throw issue. the uh, center of gravity off. You know, um, and that's why you have that ball shape. The Ebola. If you make it long and pointed, then you're going to have a front heavy pellet. Yeah. And it won't be drag stabilized like it should be. And Daniel's first gun was a hand me down Daisy Power Line. Nice. That's what I think that's what mine was yeah. too. Yeah. He's probably yeah. about our age. <laughs> <laughs> mine was back before that. <laughs> and I don't know what mine cost, Rick. Santa Claus brought it. Yeah. There you go. Oh, was it, it was, mine well, was a hand me down. It was brother. back then. It was probably two bits. <laughs> <laughs> two bits. Ah, thanks. <laughs> and Joe's number is. Here, here's, yeah. a, here, here's a good question. Here's a good question for you okay. guys. What is the one gun, and, and Rick, one gun <laughs> oh, that you regret selling or getting rid of? I'm, we'll go to you first, Rick. ASP20. ASP20. Sig break barrel. Hmm. I have no demons. I've never sold my rifles. <laughs> never got rid of something you I, wish Well, you I got rid back. of a gauntlet 177. I, I don't care about it. <laughs> I did. I did. I, did I, I it was okay. It, it just wasn't for me. The stock. It's it's but, but it's you, I mean stock. you don't have one you, you wish you had back. No, I have all okay. I have all my well, stuff. You're, you're probably one of the rare people then. No, I have rifles I've done for people I wish I owned because I did a good job on them. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if they made a, a gauntlet two and one seven seven, you get one. I'll just rebarrel it. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Larry? What's uh, the one you? I you regret had having sold my Pro Sport. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Arms Pro Sport. Mm. Good one. Good one. I've never gotten rid of any of them. He's a good. <laughs> you're a good person. This is the strangest <laughs> table. Angie is the uh, the other side of the uh, air gun. Well, you want your flex pick? I still got it. <laughs> oh, but I would like to get my uh, one seven seven back from Rick. Yeah, I'll have that about? rifle soon. Like not you not you oh. ream yeah oh. I'll, I'll have that rifle yeah soon. i'd love to have that back <laughs> rick i'm question. coming for your rifle uh oh we got a question so how did you or where did you learn to mod your guns um i had to work on my own rifles because so you just did it you didn't know what you were doing you just I, I, I watched a lot of him <laughs> i watched a lot of other people and i talked to people and i just said screw it i i degassed it and said if i blow up i died <laughs> and, and, and there wasn't a lot to choose from either yeah yeah this was the beginning of the sport yeah. basically because this is 2011 12 yeah and so i i had a disco and i, I learned how to work on rifles and that disco. there weren't a lot of retail retailers nope. there then there weren't a lot of tuners then there were no and custom parts and now there's more tuners <laughs> yeah. than you could dream of just watch any facebook yeah, channel and tell you how good they are actually i think i i actually think a lot i think a lot of people who are able to should should know how the rifle works and should be able to know how to take it apart safely to a point you know, yeah to a point i mean then send it to him so he can charge you but, i don't work <laughs> on, i don't work on guys buddy well send it to me so i can keep it but um, <laughs> no, but i think some actually if it was me i think i'll just start for break barrels and know how to shoot first and then go yeah, to pcp i like it because I see a lot of people getting a PCP and they can't shoot. <laughs> Question. I have a few questions. Okay. Somebody has a 1377 and 1322. They're great guns. Mm -hmm. Why the ridiculous price on hybrid slugs? Any 35 cal pellets coming out soon? And then tell Larry I'll send Moose his way. <laughs> who just acquired a blue streak hybrid slugs like what lead freeze no, i think no, he's no, talking about, about FX. 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 oh, oh yeah. god no. we don't know That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> they are quite spendy yeah yeah they're quite spendy In they do 20... they do shoot well though yeah i don't know if you ever shot any but yeah. i've shot them they shoot they shoot awfully well but boy are they spendy yeah they, they're proud of them in 25 years of air gunning, I feel this is the golden age. So many manufacturers, so many innovations. Do you all agree? And what new tech do you see being big next? 
uh, one of the things that um, I think is fantastic, and uh, I saw it this week on Larry's gun um, on the day states is the built-in chronograph. I, I just, I can't tell you how much time that could have saved me in the past. Um, knowing what my right, not having to haul that equipment around, uh, be able mm -hmm. to check it in the field, you know, uh, sometimes I I've, I've missed a target and I'm like, my gun sounds funny. Is it, you know, what's it doing? You don't know until you get home, but if you got a chronograph built in, you, you know, right away. Um, so I think that's a fantastic, um, option that, uh, as in the day state rifles and it'll probably eventually leach out like all technology does to other rifles in the future. But right now day state has that and it's, right. and it's fantastic. Ammo wise. See, COVID just beat up a lot of stuff GSB was going to do because we announced a lot of stuff at the last shot show. We showed the lead free slugs. Mm -hmm. We were going to do the bigger metal mags mm -hmm. and then the, the, the Hades and 30 and 35. Right. And of course, the Hades and 30 came out and, you know, they went like hotcakes. When 35 Hades comes out, I'm going to. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna jump. That's gonna be a nasty round. Yeah. That's gonna be a a nasty, big, nasty round just coming at you. Yeah. So yeah, grinder so, tip on yeah, it. Yeah, because it's just when it does when it does open up, it's like a blender. It just destroys everything. It, it's it's truly a gun. You, you know, and that round until until I shot that round, I still was shooting the poly mags. But after after shooting the Hades, I, I don't. I don't buy the poly mags anymore. Not, <gasps> not that they're not, not that they're not good, but but the problem with the poly mags. Yeah, I, come back my way, Joe. Come the, back the my way. The problem that I had with the poly mags is nothing I shot them in would be accurate beyond about 850 to 860 feet per second. Whereas the Hades, I could rip See, them. I noticed that a lot of people shooting poly mags, they think they should shoot them slower. I actually told people to shoot them faster. Everything I've done, they just cartwheeled. Really? Yeah. I, I, I mean, I've seen people shoot the 22s at close to a thousand and they were accurate. Yes. Yeah, so and I've, that leads to what we were talking about earlier, you know, accuracy versus velocity. Right. I'm accuracy all the time. And luckily enough, and, they and were going the back. They were still accurate. You know, you know? Yeah. so maybe they're shooting, you know, obviously they're shooting out of a different barrel than I am. But, you know, the, the guns that I have barreled, they, they would not shoot well beyond 850. To oh, you barreled them. Oh, okay. I barrel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not blaming anyone. So we're, looking, we're looking at something that's a consistency issue. Yeah, and right. Maybe the manufacturing. Right, but the Hades, no, no matter what I put in, no matter what I put the Hades in, I could shoot them all the way up to a thousand feet per second with no, no the problem. The Hades are just the 22s are just they they were groundbreaking. I mean, I I, I knocked have, down I so many dogs. I have a thought on the technology front. Do you have a question? Three questions. Excellent. Um. You get one gun. Mm. What's your must-have gun? Oh, I know mine Sorry. right now. Yeah, I do too. Do you know yours today? Go the news day know. state Delta Wolf. You can shoot it in 177, 22, 25, 30. It's programmed with three set programs for all of those calibers, or you can customize and it has the chronograph built okay. right into it. And they're accurate. We've shot them and Price? They're good. So you have to ask. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little more expensive. Yeah. I'd have to look it up to be uh, sure, but it's a little over three grand if I remember right. right. So you pay for that versatility. Yeah, you, we pay but, for technology too. Yeah. So, right. and you can change it on the fly right on the side of the gun with a touch screen. <laughs> well, if it was me, I'd probably get the Day State Delta Wolf and 22 25 or 30 it could be a program <laughs> <laughs> but i'm serious that's the gun i'd get i get that day state delta wolf uh, and we'll be we'll shoot that tomorrow yeah, cool. yeah let, we'll get that and we'll show you why that's his choice and it's I also coming that that's coming up on wednesday wednesday oh i'm not waiting till wednesday <laughs> <laughs> no. you have to wait till wednesday for that segment guys no i'm simple i'd just get a i'd get a condor I, I like I like the Air Force platforms. I mean, it, it's either that or or my or Marauder. You know, I prefer you those. I'm not a high end. Please, that, I'm not a high end guy because I mean, I they're you. modifiable. That, yeah. that I, I can work on them. Yeah, so yeah. I make it. For, but I'm just that makes sense. I yeah. like that. I like the the 
the Delta Wolf. I like the Red Wolf. It's just not for me. No, yeah. I get you. Yeah. Because I'm broke. But, <laughs> what about you, Angie? Well, I'm a deer hunter. I love deer hunting. And I haven't had a whole lot of experience with a lot of big boy air guns. The TC-45 does oh, me God, wonders. That's a good I love gun. that gun. Um, so I would probably Ooh. go with that at this point. That may change. But at this point, the game on TC-45 took my best And if it was in a survival situation where into the world scenario, that's probably the gun I'd get. Mm -hmm. The, the I, uh, TC so thirty five long though that Lots one's power. pretty sweet. Well, that's the one when Travis was here last time. He shot my TC thirty five long. Oh, he I wanted love to take that, that thing. Oh, that one is impressive. He I'll hasn't say. noticed it's missing yet. Yeah, mm. um, <laughs> it's got it's got one of the new Air, Air Apple tags on it, um, <laughs> hidden in the grip. Uh, for me, it's going to be something probably big bore, and probably my SWA long gun, which yeah. I haven't shot yet. So I that can't one know. is. A good choice. It's yeah. you it's can got, shoot anything. You can shoot anything. It. It's not ammo picky because I rocks. literally I could throw rock Dirt. salt in it and pebbles. <laughs> yeah. and I can make I could make holes in something if I had to. Right. Um, but I can also get really precise with the slugs. It's a smooth bore barrel, but we put a rifle choke in it and we could put shots touching it 50 yards with it. So with, with 400 plus push put down. That's what I was gonna ask. That's that really light gun that I picked up. No, 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 no. You like the short one. The, the long gun is actually close to five plus hundred foot pounds. The short gun is the carbon <laughs> version with the AR stock and grip, the little 15 inch. Yeah. That one does 350 make. foot pounds. That's just crazy. Yeah, I haven't shot that one yet. I may change my mind after. The, that is because that's putting almost as much power out as the Gambo TC45 mm -hmm. in that fraction of the. Yeah, because the TC45 nuts. gets like four, four on a with the 520 four grain pellets. Change, yeah. yeah, so we're shooting 20 gauge, 400 grain, 20 gauge slugs, uh, and it's got a shuttle out. magazine, yeah. so you got a big bore with multi shot. There's more guns doing that. I mean, the hammer does it too. So, yes. So no real answer on the hybrid slug pricing. Well, Why there wouldn't be. There probably prices? won't be an answer on that because nobody hears from FX. Yeah. So we don't know what FX does or why they do it. So I don't know that we Maybe can make that name. decision. Um, I can shoot polymags 25 at 500 FPS accurate? Question mark. It depends on your rifle. If you rifle mm -hmm. or shoot them. Yeah. Um, a lot of that depends on your rifle. Yeah. You know, doing a lot of pellet testing and stuff, the polymags a lot of times went out over the rest of the pellets. They're super accurate for me. No, they do shoot accurate. I got your check waiting for you, Angel. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, I say something else? Yes. Yeah. The um, this is about the JSB pellets, the mm -hmm. GTOs, mm -hmm. lead free. A lot of lead free pellets that I shoot, they don't fly straight. They're all over the place. But yeah. the GTOs, That's I right. mean, whole same no, through haven't. the same hole every time. They're Those awesome. are great pellets. Mm -hmm. yeah, GTOs. And if you need velocity, if you're a velocity person and you want accuracy, but you have maybe a little less powerful gun, but yeah. you still want the velocity, so you reduce the flight time. That's why you want velocity, by the way. You want velocity, especially if you're hunting, to reduce the flight time between you and the, what you're trying to hit. Right. Yeah. So that that's where the GTOs become really good. And I cannot wait for the slugs to come out. Yeah. Uh, and especially if you're, if you're at a farm testing lead freeze a good way to go yeah we have a lot of customers that have falcons and right. the like and they're always looking for a good non-lead pellet right so and they're so the few and far between them. and then finding a gun that will shoot them is the other issue right well, the, GTOs, don't want, the gtos they do. you don't want to push them too fast you don't want to push them too hard but they do they do they're very accurate yes sir Speaking of versatility, is there a barrel twist rate which shoots a larger variety of pellets and slugs? Not so pellet picky. One in 18 twist. Yeah. One in 17. One, one in yeah. 17. One in 18. Was that an answer? Yes. It's <laughs> kind of a yeah, it's kind of middle of the it's a middle of the road barrel, so it's kind yeah. of shoots. It's just, it's a generalized um, twist rate for yeah. most of the um rifles out what do, what do most air guns what's because uh, i hear one in 16 a lot what is what is the sort of most generic barrel you'll find out there in air guns and twist rate yeah what we just said yeah 17 18 the, yeah. What, where do, where do i keep hearing one in 16 what does that come i don't know we use those, we use well there's i mean there's so many barrels with so many different twist rates and and it, 
and it, it comes down to the manufacturer and, and mm -hmm. what they're trying to shoot to and what's available to them. Um, so if we're going to shoot pellets, you don't need a lot of twist no. because they're drag stabilized. So you can have a one in 32, one in 40. It, it's not super important on the twist rate, but when you have slugs that are spin stabilized, then the twist weight becomes very important and you want, you know, lower twist rates, you know, one in 12, one in eight, even. Gotcha. Depends on the slug. Uh, weight. Depends on the, yeah. the slug weight. Yeah. Yep. And speed. What, if any, damage can come from shooting slugs through a rifle choked barrel? Uh, Only the accuracy, really. You can't really damage the barrel itself no. doing it. No. Uh, it, but it, it will, it will if let it, it up really it, yeah, bad. If the choke is real tight, it will. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me just jump in real quick. Um, if you are testing things, and I only say this because we had this happen recently at the pro shop. When we're talking slugs, we are talking air gun lead slugs. Yeah, soft, we're not talking lead firearm slugs. pistol rounds, jacketed rounds, right. etc. Because they will get there was, stuck. There was a gentleman who tried to fire a muzzle loader uh, <laughs> ballistic point. It's always someone, isn't there? Jacketed slug and ruined his gun. Essentially, yeah, that would got wedged into the barrel that cannot be extracted at this point. So he's basically bricked the gun. So. When we talk slugs, please know we're talking soft lead, air gun lead, non jacketed Right, slugs designed for air rifles. Yes, so that, that we want to make sure that, because you can run a slug, quote unquote, in your air gun and absolutely trash it. We are talking right, about- uh, Yeah, a powder burner slug. That's yeah. a good point. And we want to make sure, you, the other thing too is like, if you say you go to 50 cal, Okay, so now there used to be all the 50 cals, air guns, like the Dragon Claw, the others, for 0.495. Right. Now you have the pile driver and you have, I think, the Texan as Texan, well. Yeah. Hammer. And also the hammer now shoot 0.510. Yeah. So 50 cal is not 50 cal. It's like 45 can be 452. And that's where slug in your barrel comes in. 45, uh, 457, 458. And so you have all these variations, just like you have in a firearm world you have in the air gun world so just because you have a 45 make sure you know that you're matching it with the right slug that's why they have all so many different heads right so just as a caveat you can muck your gun up pretty good by running the wrong 50 right. cal bullet in it or 45 cal bullet in it you can do some real damage and, and here's a question i get repeatedly repeatedly how do i determine what slug will shoot out of my gun you know how, how do i determine i have a let's say they say i have a 25 cal marauder and i want to shoot slugs out of it how do i determine how to do that um yeah exactly yeah well there's there's you there's slugging your barrel mm -hmm. which which is pushing the slug through the barrel and then measuring it but in a marauder it has it does have a choke so you can't push it through the choke and do that um so there's a couple different ways. If it's an unchoked barrel, push the uh, projectile through the barrel and then measure measure the projectile. The second is look at the manufacturer specs on the barrel if they if they put that out there. And then the third one is go to the Gateway Air Guns website where a lot of people have already tested and tried just about every slug and every type of gun and 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 look up the information because you'll probably find it there. Yeah. Good point. Get help. Get help. Yeah. Don't try to just buy a bunch of slugs, start shooting it through there because you're going to be really disappointed, waste a lot of money. Get help and actually, um, you know, if you're asking for help, you're probably asking because you don't know the answer. Right. So if you have Nothing somebody that gives you the answer, even if it's not the answer you wanted, right. um, maybe they know something and you, yeah. you save yourself a lot of headache just by listening to them. So not a lot just, of money. Yeah. Just, uh, just frustration too mostly too yeah. yeah other questions how can you tell if you have a choked barrel well if you if you remove the barrel and in, in most cases or in some cases where right. you, where you can push the slug through the barrel or the pellet um with a ramrod you can feel it tighten up at the very very end of the barrel usually within the last half inch and and often way less than that you'll feel it tighten up at the end and it'll take extra force to push it through if you can just push it through from one end to the other with the same resistance it's not slugged right i mean it's not, not choked, choked. <laughs> um i think the bottom line is that 
if you bought an air gun, especially if you bought an off the shelf air gun, mm -hmm. unless it says comes with an unchoked barrel, it's probably choked. Right, right. Typically, that's true. And and it's usually they usually say it somewhere too in the literature. Because actually, it, the reason they choke a barrel is because it adds that bit of stability and reforming of the pellet right. on the exit to give it better accuracy. You want a choked barrel if you're shooting pellets. The, better, the thing that we've been really finding out and I've been excited to see is that the way that the guys like JSB and there's other, I mean, I know I'm not supposed to maybe mention their name, but H&N makes some slugs too. Right. And they shoot also pretty good out of choked barrels. So there are pellet makers that are making slugs that have figured out yeah. how to do it in such a way where <laughs> you get the benefit of not having to swap, you could run these. Be, you run better ammo without having to go spend a lot of money to mod your gun. Right, and so, and that's if they run a real light choke, though. Yeah. Um. Some some barrels have a very heavy choke, and they just won't shoot slugs. Period. Um. Yeah. So that's that's one of the things um, you got to consider. So you got to know the know the gun, but question that information is out there. How does my Taipan Compact? 25, right. 13 inch barrel shoot the same as my 23 inch barrel huts on. As in energy wise, energy level, I guess that's what he's or saying. Accuracy. I, I said, okay. well, the tight pants, a hell of a yeah. good gun uh, with CZ it's, barrel. Yeah, it's definitely a barrel. Fantastic trigger. Um, it's a uh, Russian or Czech, Czech or Slovakian, isn't it? Uh, it, it, but yeah. it, the, the craftsmanship and workmanship of that gun is fantastic. I guess I'd ask the question, or is he asking the question? Is oh, how, accuracy? How does, or well, no, no, I was just asking the question. Power. Is it like, how is my, how is a, a cheap hot sawn shooting as good as an expensive gun? I, I don't know. I don't understand. Yeah, there's the a question. couple ways you could read that yeah, question, I, that I question. guess. I don't know what he's asking, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I guess you have to be a little bit more specific. What happens if water builds up in the air tank? Yeah, well, that happens. A bad you're thing. kidding. <laughs> Actually, water is in every air tank. Um, and even if you have a really good compressor, it cannot take all of the water no. out of the air. Because when the air um, heats up the tank, it has to cool down. Right. And it, you simply just can't extract all the water out of there. It's, it's literally impossible without $100,000 equipment. Um, so there's always water in the tank. But the, no, the key, no, the key no, no, is on. there's moisture in the tank. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. well, moisture water, water. No, yes, <laughs> no, but there is there's water like you pour it out of the tank, and there's moisture like you wipe off some condensate or uh, condensation out of the tank. Okay, so I think that there's a distinction, right? So I mean, there is breathing air quality, dry air that is scientifically measured as dry. Mm -hmm. And then there is all the other compressors that don't run them through the scientific test because they know they're not going to pass. So I, I mean, shoot it often, shoot it often. And you know what <laughs> Joe was talking about maintaining your gun. I just did a rebuild for a guy on his Marauder. When I pulled it apart, it was brown mud in his cylinder and he hand, he used hand, hand pumped pump it huh? with yeah. a filter. And there, this is like maybe a whole nother topic. We and right. this block week. was all rusted. Wasn't it, it was just, well, it wasn't bad. We might have caught it quickly. Uh, enough, I've but seen, it was I've seen guns destroyed from mm -hmm. water, completely yeah. pitted with a hand yeah. pump. Air Guns of Arizona does sell an inline filter that you can put between your compressor or whatever you're yeah. filling your tank or your gun with yeah. uh, that reduces the moisture, but 100% no. No, that's, that's but like, it improves it's a, it. Well, it does. Right. Yes. Any improvement is good. It's better right. than no you improvement. Know, desiccant beads, filters. Just make sure it's on filters. the high pressure side. You want to dry it on the high pressure side. Yeah, Drying the impact side, does, side nothing. does nothing. I don't care what anyone so, says. The guy who nothing. asked about type and compact yes. says yes. velocity. Okay. Velocity. Well, it's, it's there's a lot to do with the valving system mm -hmm. in the in the guns and how big the transfer ports are and how the the gun breathes and the tune and how it's tuned. You know, so maybe one gun's detuned low, maybe one gun's tuned up high, but uh, I know in those two cases, it's it has to do with the transfer port on those guns. Uh, the Type N has a much larger transfer port, so it breathes <laughs> a lot more air up right. uh, through that barrel. Does anyone know if there are any new air arms coming out this year? Besides we the do new know. field target gun. I'm not aware of anything right this moment that they have new. 
Yeah. I mean, the gun I'm shooting for the sh for the expo is new to me. They've had it out for a little bit. It's it's they've had a carbine. They've added a regulator and they've added a moderator. But that's sort of what they've been doing to all their guns. It's not a new gun per se, uh, but it is new compilation of pre-existing parts. I don't know. <laughs> it's, Reconstruct. I, I love the gun and I love the the simplicity and traditional nature of their guns. So um, I'd love for them to maintain that, but then I'd love to see them take all of that exceptional engineering and come out with something really cool on the other side of it. Would you like to see more wood stocks being offered? Me personally, I, I could care less about a wood stock. Um, a lot of people love wood. Uh, I'm more of a tactical gun guy. So for me, no, I don't care. On some rifles, I think the wood is great, but I I I beat them up too bad. What would I do? I, I most of my stuff's on chassis systems anyway. I'm with Joe. It I mean, it just depends on what it is. Yeah. Some look good with a wood stock. Some that Avenger sure looked good with a wood yeah, stock. That was yeah, that's a great change. Yeah. I want the stock that fits and shoots well, so it beds the action <laughs> and makes it consistent. Yeah. I don't care if it's important. wood or plastic or whatever. I like wood stocks. I prefer <laughs> wood stocks, but it's more about the shooting. I feel me. that I'm more connected organically to the gun, and mm. I know that sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, it I does. Agree. It makes but sense. I like the, the way it's like when I went to Shot Show <laughs> last time we had it. Um, everybody puts all their firearms in these lead sleds. You can't feel the gun. Right. Okay. I wanted to say, can I pick it up? Can I shoot that 300 Winchester mag free holding from the shoulder and see if I can still tag that, that, you know, Gone hostage target yeah. swinger at 200 yards. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. I want to, I want to feel connected. And I feel like the plastics and the composites and the rail guns, the chassis guns, all that stuff is one of the reasons that I, I very much appreciate the LCS and its engineering and what it brings to the table um, I feel, but I don't feel as connected to that as I would say something maybe a little less raily. And see, and that's how I feel about a chassis system and for me, because I most of my stuff's either done on a bench or prone, and a chassis system for me is just where it's at because it's it it's it's all one big piece of metal at that point for me, and it works. Yep. Well, that's for you know, we different strokes for different fashion, yeah. and, and that's okay. Yes, Sue. Is that something I should worry about in the origin by hand pumping? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, the hand pump is a great way to get air in your gun. Um, if you have no other option. Right. Um, and I shot my disco and my Marauder hand pumping until I could afford to get a scuba tank. Right. And then I got scuba tanks and then I got a shoebox, and we've been through this discussion previously, but the point is, is that it is a way to go shoot and, and a gun that is all in, minus a scope 350 bucks um shoot the ever-living crap out of it don't worry about and it. i just want to add and, to this real quick to any of your questions um when people hand pump a lot of them hand pump too fast too they need to take their time in a hand pump they need to keep it consistent but not going at it because they're going to overheat it and they're going to burn out their pump eventually anyway so they need to take their time and it'll, it'll help with the heat and it's really and, heat where you get the, the condensation. Yes. Stuff. Yeah. If you buy a hill pump, they offer an option that has a desiccant bowl on it and it dries the air as you're pumping. And when you buy it, it also comes with a couple of refreshers for the desiccant. So you can get hand pumps that have dryers on. Them. Yeah. Are they as good as our inline filter? No, not at all, but it helps. It does help. Um, and, and to that point too, even the compressor. So even if you buy uh, like, let's say a Nomad or any of these other compressors, they still don't have any filtration on them right. for filtering water. So you can still run into that same problem you're, you're having with the hand pump. Um, so unless you go to a scuba compressor or maybe right like one a with a charcoal filter and, and, you know, three stage filter systems, you're, you're still going to have that same issue. But I've found um, through taking hundreds and hundreds of guns apart, that if you shoot them regularly, even if you're hand pumping and you're getting the water out and you're filling them and you're getting the water out, then you typically don't run into too much of an issue. It's only when they, when oh, you yeah. stop and set, 
set them down and they sit there for a while and the water sets in one position for a while that you come into a problem. So shoot a lot is my suggestion if you can't buy a good filter. Yeah, and typically you'll get the corrosion right at the valve coming out of the tank That's if it right. has it. So if you store it horizontally, you avoid some of that corrosion at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. So. Well, in order to shoot a lot, you're going to need pellets, and they have them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Sue. Two more questions, and then we probably Yeah, need two more up. questions, and that's just a little wrap up. Unless there's a really good question yeah. that we can't miss, but go ahead. Okay. I, I'm going to read this as it says it because I don't understand. Okay. What is an all right PCP 177 air rifle? Oh, that's a perfectly good yeah, question. Yeah. We get that. Marauder yeah. 177. Yeah, no, well, actually, that is not a bad choice. <laughs> yeah. What did you say? Marauder 177. It's easy, it's inexpensive, and it works. Yep. Day State Revere. If That's you want to go a little bit more, exactly. they make a one. fantastic 177. What was that old um, Brocock, the early one with the, didn't even have a gauge on it. What's the 177? God, I had one. I can't think of that. I have the, the air arms so we're Brocock, shooting this week. Yeah. They made an S6. S6. And, S6. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that was yeah, a yeah, great little nice. 177 yep. gun. If you can find them. Okay, last question. Hold or sell DAQ Exile 308. Nice new big bore options out there. Oh, There's a man. lot of great yeah, but big bore options. DAQ, but the, though, yeah, that's yeah, I'd hold it. I'm, I'm sorry, I'd hold yeah, it. Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd it. keep that too and buy another gun. Yeah. That's it. All right. Fantastic. All right, well, we want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to all the folks here. We got Angie, Larry, Travis, Joe, and Rick here. Um, join us tomorrow starting at 7.30. Is that right? 7.30 a.m. Mountain time. Mountain time. And we're going to be leading off, you guys ready, with the brand new Air Venturi Avengers, that's which cool. is going to be so very cool. Oh, that's shoot off time. Uh, we've got a 22 and a 25. I think Angie's already drooling over there to kick some more butt. Uh, I, I might not shoot tomorrow just because I don't want to lose again. <laughs> It's, it's good sad. for you, Rick. It's uh, no. good for you. It happens a lot. Uh, my sister beats me too. So anyway, please join us. Uh, Larry, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Larry. For coming out. It's and Larry will be here all week. Yeah, and so, so will Joe. Joe. So will Joe. And uh, so you guys come hang out with us all week too. Dang right. All of you will be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. Thank yeah. you, Sue. And we are going to have some more people coming. Bringing that out. <laughs> We do have more people. We got Hawk come in. We got some other folks coming too. So that'd be great. Join us. Have a great evening, rest of your evening. And um, thank you guys for watching. See ya. See ya. Have a good night.